Hello and welcome back. In this Black Excellence presentation, we will highlight 25 Black-owned vineyards and wine companies. Welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we share Black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. Globally, wine generates more than $290 billion in sales each year, and enterprising wine connoisseurs are finding innovative ways to earn their share. So it should come to no surprise that Black families and Black entrepreneurs are making their presence known and making a big splash in the world of wine. And although our fleet is small, relative to the roughly 11,000 wineries in the United States, our poor is powerful. From the Deep South to Northern California, Black winemakers and growers have found creative ways to build wine brands that last. With an already large and growing footprint on the restaurant industry, it was just a matter of time and opportunity for African Americans to make their mark in the wine business. These are some of the most sought after vineyards and wineries in the world, and a brief bio on the founders so that you can support them and learn more about their journeys. In this original Black Excellence video, we will highlight 25 black owned wine companies. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, Abbey Creek Wine, Portland, Oregon. Bertoni Faustin became the first black winemaker in Oregon after planting his grapes and creating his first wine label in 2008. Located just outside of Portland, Oregon, and named after the creek that runs through the vineyard, Abbey Creek produces a number of prestigious wines that go hand in hand with a number of occasions, whether it be ready-to-drink Chardonnay and Rosé, or cellar savers like Pinot Noir and Cabernet Sauvignon. Number two, Bodkin Wines, Heldsburg, Sonoma County, California. Founded by Chris Christensen in 2011, the Sonoma Valley-based winery is most known for its sparkling Sauvignon Blanc, America's very first bubbly Sauve Blanc. In the many years since, the Iowa native, along with his business partner and former Oregon resident Andrew Chambers, has produced 15 varietals of wine, from Verdello to Chardonnay, Zinfandel, and more, 11 of which were scored at 90 points or higher by wine enthusiasts. Number three, Brown Estate, Napa Valley, California. When the parents of Deneen, David, and Coral Brown purchased an abandoned Napa Valley ranch in 1980, they initially planted, farmed, and sold grapes to local winemakers after rehabilitating the property. Fast forward to 1995, and the Brown children began researching how to make their own wine, establishing the Brown Estate label in 1996, and debuting their first three vintages in 2000. Brown Estate currently produces multiple wines and hosts visitors by appointment at their tasting room in downtown Napa and at their winery in Helena, California. Number four, Charles Wine Company, Lodi Appalachian, California. The Los Angeles-based wine company was born with a few Cabernet and Zinfandel grapevines planted in Paul Charles's own backyard. But now the winemaker and his partners, DeAndre Charles and Dr. Sharice Moore, produce more than 500 cases a year for their loyal customers. Since launching their first bottle label in 2014, the winery has since expanded its roster of grapes, now featuring Chardonnay and Pinot Noir on the tasting menu as well. Number five, Darjean Jones Wines. Napa Valley, California. It was 2010 when winery owner Donna Darjean Jones first sourced grapes to produce her very own Merlot in Napa Valley with hopes of spreading a little joie de vivre or joy of living to her fellow wine lovers. She's been doing just that for the last 10 years with the winery's signature Merlot, award-winning Cabernet Franc, delectable Chardonnay, vivacious Viognier, and splashy rosés that may leave you begging for another glass. Number six, Domaine Curry Wine, Napa Valley, California. Aisha Curry, culinary star, lifestyle guru, and wife of Warriors point guard Steph Curry, entered into the foray of the wine world with this partnership with her sister-in-law, Sadell Curry. Their wine is being produced by Napa winery, Coup de Fura, and can be described as explosive, complex, and serious. Wine critics have raved over the Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc under Domaine Curry, the wine label love child of Aisha and Sadell. 
Number seven, D. Wade Sellers, Napa Valley, California. Dwayne Wade may have been most famous for his skills on the basketball court that led him to win three NBA championships while he was in the league. But he has a hidden talent many of his fans often forget. He's a total wine connoisseur. His travels abroad and love of grapes led him to produce his own wine label featuring a red, white, and rosé option grown and bottled in Napa Valley. Number 8. Flow Wine 360, Chevy Chase, Maryland. Named after the acronym For the Love, Marcus Johnson's winery was launched in 2011 with the intention of leading sippers to rediscover the things they love that may help life flow more meaningfully. He produces three varietals, including a not-so-oaky Chardonnay, Moscato, and a red blend comprised of Zinfandel, Cabernet, and Merlot. Number 9. Frechette Winery, Red Mountain AVA, Washington. Based in Washington State's Red Mountain AVA, American Viticultural Area, Frechette Winery was an idea born from the minds of couple Greg and Shay Frechette as they decided to trade in their Southern California careers for a more balanced and family-oriented lifestyle. Their first vintage arrived in 2011, and by 2013, the couple's family business had expanded with the opening of their first tasting room. Now the family is producing over 2,000 cases of wine under their Frechette and Chachet labels, including wines like Syrah, Cabernet, Zinfandel, Malbec, Merlot, and Simeon. Number 10, Indigene Cellars, Carmel Valley, California. Nestled in the hills of Carmel Valley, California is Raymond Smith's Vineyard, which produces distinguished and structured wines loved by master collectors and new drinkers alike. The estate makes a variety of wines, but it's the robust and addictive reds that stand out the most, including the Cocoa Spice Edna Valley Pinot Noir and the opulent Sangiovese Reserva. Number 11, Jenny Don Sellers, Wichita, Kansas. There was a time when Jennifer McDonald was merely dreaming about turning her homemade wine into Wichita's first urban winery. But in 2019, that dream came true when she opened the doors of Jenny Don Cellars. Although the winemaker had originally partnered with the facilitator in Napa to make her wine, Wichita now serves as the base of her winemaking operations. Customers can shop her white wine blends, rosé, Pinot Noir, and more wines directly in Kansas and 37 more states. Number 12, Le Abouge Wines, Sonoma County, California. It was a seductive Pinot Noir that drew artist and industry expert Danny Glover to the world of wine many moons ago. While the winemaker's long-lasting love affair with Pinot Noir has resulted in him producing many bottles of the good stuff at his Napa Valley estate, his winery is also known to dabble in Sauvignon Blancs too. Danny Glover, no relation to the actor, was a songwriter and producer in Los Angeles when the art of winemaking caught his eye. Without hesitation, he changed careers and has not looked back ever since he founded La Abouge Wines, a producer of Pinot Noir crafted in an old school French style. Number 13, J Moss Winery, Napa Valley, California. Known for their Cabernet Sauvignon, J Moss Winery is a black-owned winery located in Napa Valley that was founded by James Moss, who made his first vintage in 2001 when he worked as a wholesaler in the wine industry. Trips to Napa Valley made him fall for wine country, so he and his wife Janet, who has a winemaking degree, made the move from Texas to Napa. Since then, J Moss has evolved into a cult favorite wine. Located in the southern part of Napa in the Crusher Wine District, tastings are usually done on the property when reservations are made in advance. Number 14, Longevity Wines, Livermore Valley, California. A lover of big, bold wines, Phil Long made his entry into the business by making wine in his garage with the help of his wife, Deborah. In 2006, he began producing wine under his longevity label in California's Livermore Valley at various facilities. Today, the winemaker has his own Livermore property, launched in 2008, where he produces high-quality Pinot Blanc, Muscat, Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, Barbera, and more annually.
Although longevity is currently only on shelves of wine shops in states, including California, Texas, Colorado, Georgia, Missouri, and South Dakota, Long's recent partnership, Bronco Wine Company, for the national launch of his wines will soon bring longevity to several more retail locations in various states in the future. Number 15. LVE Wines, Napa Valley, California. Chances are you probably can't sing like John Legend, and you likely can't play the piano, write songs, or perform all around the world like him either. But there is something you can do like the award-winning musician. You can drink like him. Apparently, 2019's Sexiest Man Alive has an affinity for Rosé, and he's sharing it with fans and wine lovers alike through his very own brand, LVE. Number 16, Markel Bonnie Wines, Cincinnati, Ohio. The brainchild of lifelong friends and Cincinnati natives, Gregory Markel Lawrence and Sean Bonnie Yisrael, Markel Bonnie was created in response to the wine industry's lacking representation of Black Americans. Founded in 2008, the winery produces a sweet white blend, sweet red blend. Number 17, McBride Sisters, Oakland, California. Robin and Andrea McBride have turned the wine industry on its head with their highly regarded Black Girl Magic collection, which serves as the sister's ode to the inspiring Black women of the past and present. And She Can Rosé is quite literally female empowerment in a can. The two sisters were both raised around vineyards and unaware of the other for nearly half their lives. In 1999, fate finally brought them together, and they created McBride Sisters, producing two brands, Truve and Echo Love. Number 18, Okapi Wines, Napa, California. Dan Johnson was a lawyer with winemaking dreams before he decided to trade in the courthouse for the vineyard by establishing his own small winery, Okapi, in Napa in 2006. Although his business is relatively small, Okapi produces about 300 cases a year. What the winery lacks in quantity is made up in quality with unique blends, red and white wines that zing with innovation and creativity. Number 19, P. Harrell Wines, Sonoma County, California. Paula J. Harrell's long-standing appreciation for wine led her to develop a winery of her own in Sonoma, California. Although the winery only produces three varietals, it's worth noting that her limited production has worked in her favor. The company's Rosé and Zinfandel are both incredible standouts, but Harold's signature Riesling is an award-winning fan favorite. Bursting with notes of citrus and minerality, Harold's 2019 Dry Creek Valley Riesling took home a gold award at the San Francisco Chronicle International Wine Competition last year. Number 20, Stuyvesant Champagne, New York City, New York. There was a time when Marvina Robinson and her friends had to combine their money just to purchase a bottle of Moet and Chandon White Star Sparkling Wine. And now, after spending the first half of her career in finance, Robinson makes her own cuvee named after her Bedford Stuyvesant hometown in New York. The sparkling wine enthusiast was unsatisfied with the different brands on the market, so she traveled to France to concoct her own. Robinson came back to New York with several different cuvées, a French term for batches of wine, and two variations came out as winners, a salmon-colored Brut Rosé and a golden-colored Grand Reserve. Number 21, Theopolis Vineyards, Mendocino County, California. Founded by lawyer-turned-winemaker Theodora R. Lee in 2003, the vast Theopolis Vineyards located in California's Anderson Valley produces a number of award-winning Petite Syrahs and Pinot Noir. Theodora Lee is known in the wine world as Theopatra, Queen of the Vineyards, for her love of grape farming and living that wine lifestyle. Her business, Theopolis Vineyards, is a vineyard and winery situated in California's upscale Yorkville Highlands of the Anderson Valley. Lee's business started as a hobby, but in 2003, she decided to grow a vineyard and began selling her wine to local winemakers. Number 22, Zaffa Wines, Burlington, Vermont. Krista Scruggs' Burlington, Vermont vineyard is as natural as it gets. The burgeoning winemaker's first vintage of natural wine came in 2017, but it was an instant standout for enophiles. Her methods are simple, no fining, filtering, additives, or funny business. Just pure fermented grape juice and apple juice too for the cider lovers. 
Number 23, Mason Noir, Mac, Oregon. Earning the title as the first African American to win America's Best Young Sommelier was the push Andre Houston Mack needed to create Mason Noir, a twofold lifestyle project that aims to pair black culture and wine, his two biggest passions. What separates his wines from the rest are his catchy hip hop themed wine names, but more importantly, Mason Noir's grapes are grown in a special cross section of vineyards throughout Oregon's Williamette Valley. Number 24, Taste Collection Cellars, Houston, Texas, and Lodi, California. Taste Collection Cellars is owned and operated by Chef Rhonda Russell, who is an executive chef of wine arts and winemaker. As the only African-American female to carry this title in the U.S., she has advanced knowledge of both food and wine. Chef Rhonda enjoys finding ways to bring out the superb taste in a wide array of food through colorful food combinations and inspired wine pairings. Her keen sense of taste brought her to become a winemaker and create her own wine collection, Taste Collection Cellars. Born and raised in the deep food culture of Louisiana, Chef Rhonda Russell's passion now is to educate and demystify both wine and the food that first sparked her imagination, Creole and Cajun cooking. Number 25, Davidson Wine, Davidson, North Carolina. Davidson Wine Company is owned and operated by Lindsay Williams, a lawyer turned winemaker who resides in Davidson. Born and raised in Ohio, she discovered a deep appreciation of wine later in life and started her wine company out of the desire to bring affordable and locally made wine options to the town right outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. While the initial plan was to buy a farm, open a vineyard, and grow the grapes herself, Lindsay found that there was a better way to do things for now. She decided to introduce the Charlotte area to its first urban winery. Williams works closely with an affiliate partner who helps her to choose the best grapes around the world, including California, Chile, Italy, and France. But Lindsay has full control when it comes to putting together the flavor palettes for her private label under the same name as the winery. We appreciate the fact that you stayed with us until the end. Thank you for spending time with us and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.